microphones. So. <laughs> yes, I could have had this done before, but I want to do that. Can anybody not hear me? Anybody not clear? Everything all right? All right. Distracting. Yeah, this is off. Yeah, this is off. All right. I'm Kyle Bailey. I live and reside here in Austin, Texas. I am a, there's really not a clear name for what I do. That's one of the issues with my business. Some people call us SEOs, which is a really irritating term to me because that's only one part of it. Uh, but what I really do is I help small businesses be clear about what it is that they're selling. And that may sound silly at first, but what it really is about is, uh, it, it's the best day that Bill Gates said, people don't buy things, they buy states. People don't buy things, they buy states. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm going to go to Best Buy and I'm going to buy a television. Now, what do I need from, from a television? What I, what I need from a television is I need to be able to see pictures of the show I'm trying to watch, right? So logically, I can do just fine with a nice little high definition, 12 inch by 24 inch monitor, I'll be just fine, right? But is that what I'll walk out of Best Buy with? No. I'm gonna get the 80 inch, 4K, $9,000 TV, because that makes me feel good. I walk in my room and I'm like, yes, that's the TV I'm watching. Now I justify it with logic. I'm gonna buy on emotion, I'm gonna justify with logic. So then I justify it and say, well, my kids, uh, can learn better on a big giant TV than they can on a small TV, right? So I'm gonna feel good about it, but I'm gonna justify it with logic. So that is the basic framework of everything I do. And that may not seem like it has a real clear connection, but the further we go, it will make a lot more sense. You guys deal, you sell safety from danger. You sell, my people are gonna be safe at my company. You sell, my stuff's going to be safe at night because I've got a lot of collateral. Somebody in here has five, 2,000 golf carts? You have carts. How many golf carts? Four to five hundred. Each one of them, how much per? Varies anywhere from 2,500 to 15,000. Okay, so easily ballpark, you can get close to half a million, maybe more of inventory sitting on a place that could get damaged really easy. So you're selling safety from that. Some of you are private investigators. How many private investigators in here? Okay, so you're selling kind of a different suite of services. And I think, I was thinking about this, uh, I've never really thought about the private investigator niche. And, and when I was uh, asked to speak here a few weeks ago, I started thinking about that and it seems like it might be difficult to market that. It's difficult to go on social media and go, hey, Look at these people I just took a picture of. I don't think you can, I don't think they would like that if you did that. So from a social media standpoint, it might not be easy to market, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the core of everything, of, of, of what I do for people, and it's a sales process, the five steps of the sale. Then I'm gonna walk through an overview of digital marketing integration, okay? The reason I'm doing this is Denise, when she and I were going back and forth and talking about this, I asked her, what are people asking about? And she began to walk me through some ideas that, that, that questions she got. What, where is the money, what, where is it even worth spending money? What's the best way to get ROI from this? Should I even mess with social media? Where do I start with social media? And then email marketing, I had a few questions about email marketing. So what I'm gonna do is basically I'm gonna overview the whole thing. I'm gonna run through it a little quickly because listen, there's no way that I could give you all the information you need in an hour anyway. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna run through my entire slide deck with the, with the goal of leaving a good amount of time for Q&A. So if you've got any questions, just jot them down. If you have any, bringing them in, that's just fine. We'll go through that. If you don't have any questions, if somehow I've not uncovered anything you have any questions about, then I'll dig a little deeper into some of the stuff I've covered. So with that, we'll get started. This presentation is called The Five Steps of the Sale and Why Your Website Doesn't Work. I added full digital marketing integration to it for, for, for you guys today. I usually just talk about the sales process in this. The idea here is that you created a website. How many of you do not have a website? Okay, so we got one here that does not. Everybody else has a website. How many of you have tried to market with your website? 
You tried to drive traffic to it. You tried to get people to convert from it and do something you wanted them to do. Just for sake of uh, clarification, conversion, you should really, really hone in on this idea. Conversion is getting someone to do what you want them to do. Okay? If, they, if you're on social media, Facebook now allows you to convert straight from your Facebook page. You can convert straight from your cover photo. You can put a call to action in your cover photo. And so you define that call to action, you send them to a page that only has that option. Okay? So I'm going to go to your Facebook page, and I'm going to go Goodson. I'm going to go to Goodson's Facebook page. It says, contact us. Bam, I'm going to contact. Don't send me to a home page with 37 other options. Send me to one page that has contact on it, because that's what I clicked. Okay? That's conversion. Where most small businesses get it wrong is they'll give me an, op an option to, come to contact you, then you send me to your homepage. And now you're essentially saying, hey, good luck. I uh, hope you find what you're looking for. Just go hunt through all that stuff and find what you're looking for. So five steps of the sale on your website doesn't work. First step of sale is greeting. This is the widest point of the funnel. In your marketing, you will talk to the most people right here. Now, understand the rule. It's the 80-20 rule. And I brought a bat. This is not a real bat. I was joking with Denise last night. I was like, some people in here are going to be carrying it. If I start swinging a bat around, I might endanger myself. But I wrote something on here. Can anybody read that? 20%. Have you, how many of you ever heard of the Pareto Principle? 80-20 rule. 80% of your profit is going to come from 20% of your effort. That's essentially it. Alex Rodriguez plays for the New York Yankees. He is a very prolific hitter. I talked to my cousin who played D1 baseball and he's a coach and kind of a philosophical guy. Uh, and he, he told me that Alex Rodriguez would be able to hit home runs as long as he can stand up. And I was shocked by that. I said, you mean even into his 40s? He said even into his 40s. Now, he told me this 15 years ago. I said, why is that? He said, because when Alex Rodriguez swings a bat, he's not like other hitters. Other hitters are trying to hit this ball, right? They're bringing it through the zone and they're trying to hit this ball. Alex Rodriguez is trying to put the sweet spot of the bat on the ball, and he's better than anybody in history has ever done. That's why he's able to come back at 40 years old and still hit home runs for the Yankees. So 80-20 rule, as it applies to a baseball bat, is the sweet spot of the bat. It's, the, it's physically, in physics, the part of the bat that responds best to being hit by a baseball Pills at the furthest. What does that have to do with marketing? What does that have to do with your website or email? What it means is figure out what you're good at and don't do the, don't do all the other stuff. Hire it out. Don't beat your head up against the wall trying to learn stuff either you don't enjoy or that doesn't really make the best use of your time. Find out where your sweet spot is, where you resonate the most, and get rid of all the rest of it. Find somebody to do it. So Greeting, you're going to talk to a lot of people here, and this is why the 80-20 rule comes in. Of course, you know, the 80-20 rule applies to your customers too. 20% of your customers are going to supply the majority of your revenue. So 20% of, of the people you contact are going to respond. 20% of those are going to buy. So you end up with 4 out of 100. Understand that. You need to plow 4,000 people through your website to get... 160 customers, I believe. Did I do that right? Anybody? All right. Nobody's better than me in that. All right. So understand that. You need to talk to a lot of people. You need to build a mailing list. You need to buy traffic. You need to do paid search. You need to do everything so you can get people through your website if you're going to market. Because you can't do this halfway. You cannot market halfway. You have to commit to what you're trying to do. So if you're going to market, what are you going to do? You need to get your value proposition and get your messaging clear, figure out what it is you're selling, go talk to the last 50 customers that you've had and ask them these three questions. What did it feel like before you used my services? What did it feel like during the use of my services? What did it feel like after? If you ask those three questions, you're gonna get a really strong sense of what you actually sell. They're gonna tell you what you actually sell. Then you take that, that information, then you go talk to your new people about it. And this is where you come into your greeting. That's the message you greet them with. If you greet your customers with the message that you have in your own brain about your services, you're not selling them, you're selling yourself. Does that make sense? So if you're selling yourself, why are you talking to other people, right? I mean, I'm being kind of blunt and rude here, but that really literally is the way it works, okay? 
So you have to kind of reverse engineer kind of your thinking, look at your business from your customer's eyes. Greeting is early stage, low pressure, low intensity. What is that wall about? Anybody? What's the core message of that wall? Okay, that may seem disconnected, but I'm gonna tell you that to your customers, your prospects really, the people you wanna buy from you that don't know you, that are gonna find you on the web, that's what your homepage looks like for the vast majority of you. Because that's just the, 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 that's the natural state of the way that we do things. Number one, we write what we know about. Number two, the majority of us aren't writers. So if you're not a writer, don't handle your copy yourself. Find yourself a writer. That's going to connect with people well. Um, the other thing is we try to put too much stuff on the homepage. You know, we cram every single aspect of our business onto the homepage. What you really want to do is have three main ideas on your homepage, and then let the rest of it flow out like a stream or a river. You look at a river. A river comes down. It's got a main channel, and then it's going to filter out. Right? We're like throwing. We're like the the floods that came through Austin. You know, six eight months ago. We're going to give you all the water at once. You want water? Here's a lot of water. We're going to have all the water. So don't do that. Take them on a path. Lead them on a journey. What did you come here for? Oh, that's great. I'm glad you came in. They could go into a restaurant. You go to your favorite restaurant. You don't go in and everything's just right there in front of you. It's not like, would you like all the raw food here? No, you're going to go on a journey, step by step. Take your customers on that same journey. Low intensity, you don't want to do a lot of selling on the home page, um, especially for you guys. Your customer is going to be more investigational. I don't think that's really a word, but I'm going to pretend that it is. Your customer, what that means is your customer is going to come to your site wanting to learn more about how this stuff works. Especially for you PIs, people haven't used a PI before. They probably are embarrassed about needing one. They're probably um, angry. There's a lot of emotion involved. So you want to take them on that journey carefully on your website. And you're really selling the contact. You're selling the phone call, not a purchase. So. Report building investigation. Most sales processes, if you've ever been through sales training, will combine these into one uh, step. I mean, we'll separate these into two steps. Rapport, rapport building will be in one step, investigation will be in the other. So I combine them into one, because as you're building rapport, you should be asking power questions that tell you, is this an ideal prospect for you? And as an aside, you should spend a lot of time and energy and money learning who your ideal prospect is. I was talking with some folks yesterday, and we were kind of digging down and getting granular on who is your ideal prospect. We have this kind of customer over here that drives us insane, and they don't buy very much from us. And there again, you get your 80-20 rule in reverse. 4% of your customers are going to cause you the most headache. But these guys over here, they buy a lot from us, and they give us less headache. So you want to replicate this customer over here and kind of don't even try to sell these people. You don't want to bring more prospects of these guys in. And what I tell a lot of folks is, man, find somebody else to, to, and give them the, the lead. If they drive you that insane and you don't make that much money off of them, find somebody else that likes those people and sells to them well and give them the lead because it's just, again, you get to your sweet spot. You're outside your comfort zone and it's causing your business more disruption by having that customer, okay? So <clears throat> I love this because it, I'm, I'm not naturally, a lot of you I know are, but I'm not naturally, the grinded out research, jot, you know, dot every I and cross every T, I'm not naturally that person. I have to force myself to do that. So this page, this, this wall really speaks to me because it's an admonishment. It tells me I need, to do, I need to work harder. And I always like those things. Those are good reminders. What I love about this is each box that you're looking at is full of files. Each one of those files is full of pieces of paper. And each one of those pieces of paper represents hours of labor of somebody doing research on somebody. That's the way you should look at your customers. You never stop learning about them they, because they're changing. You know, as, as we move on, your core customer base, whatever, if you sell 35 to 55, that 35 to 55 is, is pulling in the values of the younger generation as we march forward. So you never quit learning about it. And none of us are perfect, we're all finite. So we're all gonna miss something, right? So ask, ask questions. How do you feel, what do you think, okay? Rapport building and investigation. Now, so we've gone through greeting, rapport building, investigation. So I'm gonna greet you, we're gonna shake hands virtually. I'm gonna ask some questions or I'm going to ask you to click some buttons. 
this is a kind of a ninja trick. Um, if you put buttons on your home page that lead to certain things that you know that when they make that choice, they are going into the funnel. They are starting the path of making the decision to buy from you. Once you've identified that, you put that button on the home page, every time somebody clicks that, you know you've got an interesting prospect. So even if they don't buy from you, you have the ability to gain and glean some information there, and it tells you that your messaging and your marketing is working. So that's kind of a ninja trick on the home page. But once you get somebody to make some indication on your website that, yes, I'm interested, you move into presentation. Presentation is the first time a solution comes out. Okay, It's the first time you tell your prospect, hey, I've heard you, I understand where you're coming from, this might be a solution for you. <coughs> then I, I'm finally in an age group that's closer to me. I'm 40, I'll turn 46 next month. Well, no, it's October now, this month. I'm getting old fast, I swear. Uh, I still feel like it's like 2002. Does anybody else resonate with that? It's 2015, what the heck? Uh, anybody remember these comic books? You remember these? Man, I wanted this so bad. Looking back now, I don't know why I wanted to look like a gray, I don't know, Robert Downey Jr., but I didn't know Robert Downey Jr. right then. But I wanted to be that dude pulling that rabbit out of that hat. I wanted it so bad. So why is presentation, why am I using that for presentation? Because as a kid, you're looking for that thing, whatever it is in magic that appeals to you, right? This is a solution. I can, I can be magic. All I gotta do is give that guy 50 cents and I can become magic. That's a presentation of the solution to my problem of not being magic, right? So presentation, you're gonna to present to your customer a very clear, detailed solution to their problem, but only after you've asked them what their problem is and asked them to self-identify and make a decision that moves them into that page, okay? This is what top-line navigation is. If you're ever looking at a website, top-line navigation, you should have drop-downs that are very clear, don't have too many, you don't want to have like 17 drop downs under a menu option. Only have like three to five, okay? So, I like this, but it's obviously a path. The nice thing about a path is, what stops anybody else from walking on that grass? Nothing. There's no like electric fence or anything. But we're, most of us are gonna walk on the path. Some of us are contrarians. I've got a little contrarian in me. I kind of walk on the grass. I want to walk on the grass, but they don't walk on the path. But even that, that's still obeying the law of the path. If you give your customer a clear path, they're gonna take it. I used to sell cars years and years ago, and my manager used to always say, you have to really, really be awful at selling cars to fail at this. People got out of bed, showered, put makeup on, and drove here to buy a car. They're not leaving without a car unless you are just awful. It's the same way, especially with a pain, uh, sale like what you have. You have a pain-induced sale. I have a pain. Maybe maybe I chanced out on security. You know people are always trying to, to wear you down on price. I wanted to not spend money on security. And then my place got robbed or my golf carts got sprayed up, ta uh, tagged up. Now I'm gonna spend the money because I had the pain. Or I didn't do the things I wanted to do. Now I've got this private investigation situation. Now I gotta pay. So you've got a lot of pain there. If you give them a path, they're going to go in and they're going to buy. The problem is that if you, if you haven't been able to sell before, either your value proposition isn't clear or your path is occluded, if you will, to use a, an eye doctor term. Um, there's a lot of ways to fix this. Uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound insulting when I say this, but almost never is it you fixing it. It's almost never you fixing it because if you could do this, this kind of thing, it's kind of like being a doctor, you know? Uh, a copywriter and a professional salesperson who understands how to speak sales language and speak copywriting, that takes a long time to learn. I mean, I've spent the last 15 years of my life doing it. So think about that. You can go ahead and try it. I'm not saying don't try it. Do whatever you want to do, it's your site. But I'm telling you that you will get, you will get where you want to get faster by hiring somebody. I'm not even saying hire me, hire anybody. There's dozens of people out there. All right. Demonstration, what is your shiny, how does your shiny object work? How is this thing gonna make my life better? Why am I gonna buy this from you, right? The nice thing for you is this kind of, is a done deal. Nobody that's buying security goes, how is security gonna make me safer? I was joking, uh, I put a picture of uh, the bacon, the big pile of bacon 
uh, out on uh, my Instagram account, and I said, the best way to get started for a digital marketing presentation, bacon. And a friend of mine, uh, if you ever watch Parks and Rec, Ron Swanson, if everybody knows who Ron Swanson is? Oh man, this joke's gonna die. All right, two people know. You'll get it. Ron Swanson is this manly guy that all about steak and bacon and guns and conservative and all this stuff. And uh, so they asked if Ron Swanson was gonna be here. I said, well, I don't think Ron Swanson's gonna be here, but he'd be comfortable, because two or three of these people in here are carrying open. And I'm sure well, there's more that are carrying concealed, so I think we're gonna be just fine. Uh, the point here that I'm trying to make is that demonstration is after presentation. So I'm gonna present you with a solution, then I'm gonna present, uh, demonstrate how it works, okay? I'm gonna present you four-man security team uh, that's gonna rotate or whatever, I don't know all your terminology, uh, but it's gonna be this, and then it's gonna be this month, much a month, and our research indicates that it typically saves the customer this because we don't have these kind of incidents. Then I'm gonna demonstrate how it works. Well, I've got my team, I've trained my team, highly trained, here's our reviews. Social proof is a big deal. If, you don't, if you've never heard of social proof, social proof value chain is this guy right here has the same problem I have. He went to this lady right here and got the solution I want. And unless he's lying, uh, his review says it went really well. So I can get the same solution he got by going to her. That is a social proof value chain. And you can, that's the best place to spend your money, I'm telling you right there. Go to your customers, get reviews, because there, there's, how many of you are not aware of Yelp? Anybody not aware of Yelp? Okay, Google reviews, all right, Yahoo reviews, okay. This is all a very, nobody saw this coming. Nobody went out there and goes, you know, the best way we're gonna make a whole boatload of money is we're gonna go make a review site. Nobody saw it coming. But what happened was, people saw an ability to tell their story easily. And so they, they started doing that, and then somebody started monetizing it. The reason it's so valuable is because I'm able to go to Amazon, for instance, and I can go and buy, uh, I bought a remote for this. It didn't come in time, but I bought it. Uh, I bought a remote for this, and I bought, there was a choice of three. I chose the one I chose because it has the highest reviews. 8,000 people have bought it, has four and a half star reviews. Now, my, I'm, I'm the type of person who doesn't trust that, naturally. I don't trust it, but if 8,000 people have bought it, and four and a half stars out of five out of 8,000 people, that means a very, very low number have disliked it, right? So if I am a contrarian and I don't trust that, what does that tell you about the people who do trust it? That tells you that we value each other's opinion. And I am going to value my breakfast today, for instance. If I walked in the room and I could pull the room in four seconds and go, okay, four and a half stars out of five, I'm eating here. That's what you want to do for your business. Tell your story. I always tell people, reverse, if you want the best way to write copy, if you don't want to hire a copywriter, here's how you do it. Go get 20 reviews, then write that review in a story. Take the all personal pronouns out of it and the person's name out of it and write that story. Person came, a typical customer comes to me with this problem. I, we applied this solution because of our training. You, uh, there's a uh, 120 point inspection. You've heard of that, right? On a car? You go to my car, our car, especially used car dealers, it's gonna be 120 point inspection. A lot of those points are, I looked at the tires, that's a point, okay? So, but still, that makes you feel good. Somebody made a 120 point inspection. You need to do the same thing for your business. We go through a 120 point checklist to make sure our, our uh, security folks are vetted. We go through this and this. Make me feel good about hiring your people. Tell me the story about why you do what you do. <clears throat> if you come from a military background, tell me about that. Tell me what got you into security in the first place. If you tell me the story, now all of a sudden I'm starting to come closer to buying you, along with buying the security, right? And I'm sure you all know, once you're involved with a person, the likelihood that you're gonna repeat business with them is a lot higher, okay? All right, <coughs> pardon me. Don't love your baby too much. It's not the prospect, prospect's baby yet, let them fall in love. What does that mean? Well, what that means is, if you have a logo, and you've had that logo because your father had that logo, and you like that logo, and it's been in your family for generations, but it doesn't sell, you get rid of that logo. If you
you have a business name, I told these folks over here, the Goodsons, I'm like, you're so lucky to have that name, Goodson. It's good. The name is good. You feel good saying it, right? But if it's, I'm not picking on anybody's name that's Ovitz, okay? If anybody in here is named Ovitz, I just pulled Ovitz. I was thinking of a name that doesn't just roll off your tongue or, you know, a longer German type name. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's one typical in America that's not going to just roll off your tongue. Understand that you can keep, I'm not, I'm, you can keep the name. Of course, it's your business. You can do whatever you want. What I'm saying is you can keep the name, but understand that you're, you're putting yourself at a, at a disadvantage to start with if you're trying to brand your company, okay? So brand your services around things that will resonate with people. Talk to people, then brand your service. Don't brand your service, and then talk to people, okay? Don't outline a service, then go talk to people. And I'll tell you something, a beautiful thing happens when you talk to people, when you start asking them a lot of questions about how they consume your services. You're gonna find little pockets of profitable services and even new services that are really easy for you to apply. I was talking to a guy just the other day, and he said one of our biggest problems is we can't come up with blog titles. I can come up with blog titles like falling out of bed. So I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. Give me a hundred bucks. I'm gonna come sit in a room with you and your team. You're three people. We're gonna sit around a table for an hour and I'm going to give you 100 blog titles. And he didn't believe me, and we actually came up with 120, about 120. <clears throat> but it's something easy for me to do, so it's a profit center. I go sit in a room, I walk out with 100 bucks, right? So think about talking to people and kind of really uh, letting their experience with you breathe, let that out, okay? That's what I mean about the prospect's baby. You need to let it be their baby. Let's talk about their baby. Don't make it, don't be like, this is my precious thing, right? that you don't, you don't ask to change my precious thing that I've built over all this time. No, it's the prospects, let it be theirs. If you have to explain it more than once, this is on your website, it's really important. Things have to be clear. I walked up to a table, a vendor table out here, I'm not gonna tell you which one. And I walked up, I couldn't tell what the person did. I should be able to tell what they do. I should be able to walk up and go, bam, that's what you do. You shouldn't have to tell me a thing. Because if you do, that means you're not marketing at scale. What does marketing at scale mean? Marketing at scale means that you can reproduce your value proposition without you being present. Because if you're present, it, by definition, it's not scale, right? You can't scale you. Your time is the one thing you cannot replicate. You have to be able to replicate your value proposition clearly in a way that a customer will consume and decide to purchase and be able to replicate that on a postcard to 10,000 people. If you have to explain it more than once, you're doing it wrong. Now, what, there's obvious caveats to really everything I'm saying, but really there's caveats to everything in the world. If you have a high education curve, if your service is something that people aren't familiar with, that's different. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm talking about is the value proposition. Remember what I said at the beginning, people don't buy things they buy states. They're not buying a person standing there with a weapon who's ready to use it in protection of your property. That's not what they're buying. They're buying the, the, the solution of fear, the dissolution of fear, the fear, that, the peace of mind. They're, they're buying laying my head on the pillow at night knowing my stuff's protected. That's what they're buying. So understand that and work that into your copy, okay? Closing... It really doesn't happen on a website, not really, unless you're a transactional seller, like you sell these. If you sold these, that's a transactional purchase, and you could close on a website. But for you, what you're trying to close is not the sale, you're trying to close the contact. Uh, there's a rule in sales, there's like an inverse scale. The higher the price, the higher the uh, level of complication, if you will, uh, the level of involvement, the level of emotion, the less the likelihood that people are going to buy without talking to somebody and doing more investigation. So you really want to sell that contact because you, what you don't want to do, you don't want to have it happen is you don't want to have them walk out and go look at another website. And if they came to your website, how many choices? Let's, let's, that's a good question. How many choices do you think, just viscerally in your head, how many choices do you think people have on the home page of Google if they were going to make a choice to come to your site how many choices did they have on the original search page? Ten. Who said that? Ten. Ten? Okay, anybody else? It's Thirty. On a full search page, if all the paid search um, elements are present, they have 30 choices. 
because if we have better Wi-Fi, I could show you, but I can't, that's okay. Um, if you look at it, you can envision a Google search page. We've all seen plenty. You've got the organics, you've got the map listing up top. Then you've got paid search at the very top, paid search down the side, but there's also 10 people also searched down at the bottom. And you have to be aware of what you're up against, okay? And as an aside, you should totally be taking advantage of, of YouTube because a lot of people will search directly on YouTube. Seems insane to me. I would never do that, but I'm not my buyer, right? Again, I'm looking at it from my buyer's eyes, not my eyes. What's my buyer doing? A good thing to understand is age demo. Who's buying from you? What is their median age? Uh, and then that's gonna help you understand how they consume media. That tells you where to spend your money. All right. Let's get a little bit into overview of did, uh, a sale. This is my personal definition. Sale happens when the right solution reaches the right problem at the right time. What this does is it gives me freedom to fail. Why do I need freedom to fail? Because if I put out 10,000 postcards and I get less than my 4% purchase rate, I feel like a failure. I want to quit. I want to pack up my bags and go home. I want my mom to cook me some food that I like and sit in an easy chair and watch a John Wayne movie. I don't want to go back out and market again. I don't want to get told no a bunch more times. Right? But if I understand that a right solution reaches the right problem at the right time, any one of those three are not present, I don't have a sale, do I? So then I know I either don't have the right solution, I've not put it together correctly, the right solution can be right, but have the wrong messaging on it and you're not gonna make a sale. You're not gonna connect with your audience. I could have the wrong problem. I could have the right solution, but applying it to the wrong problem. And this again gets to what is your customer buying? People don't buy things, they buy states. At the right time, might not be the right time. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna test this market for a while. I'm gonna push this messaging out to this market. I'm gonna invest, I'm gonna commit. Again, you cannot do marketing halfway. Don't matter what it is. You cannot do one batch of postcards and go, oh, of course the postcards don't work. You can't do one email push out and go, well, email, email marketing didn't work. You can't do SEO for six months and quit going, well, SEO didn't work. What you have to do is go out of this much budget, what's the best way for me to spend it? And Unfortunately, the, the difficult thing is finding an honest marketer who's not going to tell you that they're not your solution. Very few marketers are going to do that. I do. I will tell you, this is not the right place to be. You don't need to be spending money with me. You need to go spend it in physical. All right, SEO. SEO is clear optics. Uh, a lot of you guys are shooters. Ladies are shooters in here. You understand the value of optics. That's what SEO is. People think SEO is a panacea that is going to just bring you customers. It doesn't. What it does, if you think of a storefront, this cleans your windows, makes all, sure all the lights work in your sign, makes sure all the stuff in your store is clear. Now, if the stuff in your store sucks,